This is Organic Electric's tutorial on building a stereoscopic robot camera head. To make this camera head, I'm using the Y2000 camera. You can find this camera online, it's pretty cheap, and the quality matches the price. It doesn't do much, and unfortunately, it always displays the timestamp in the bottom right hand corner. But, they're really easy to take apart, and because they're so cheap, you don't have to worry, and we get to make cool robotic camera heads with them. The minimum focus distance for this camera starts around 3 or 4 inches, but it's tough to tell because it's only standard definition video. Also, the field of view or the degrees between the edges of the frame is around 40 degrees. Now the inner axial separation is important to remember. In human eyes, that distance is about two and a half inches, similar to the distance these two, between these two cameras here. But I am hoping to get these two cameras even closer together. This is the guts inside the Y2000. It comes apart into all these pieces, and we'll only focus on the electronics right here. To take it apart, all you need to do is remove the stickers, pry the plastic enclosure apart, and delicately remove all of the electronics. The part you need to watch out for is the very small ribbon cable which connects the circuit to the camera sensor. Now hiding inside the sensor mount is the microphone. I pulled the microphone out just because I felt like the sound was getting muffled hiding inside there. Now because stereoscopes require two cameras and I want this tiny inner axial separation, I directly super glued both camera sensor mounts to each other. One of the cameras is upside down to create a mirror image and I used pieces of tape to hold them in place while the glue hardened. While those are hardening, I applied super glue directly to the servo and then to the sensor mounts so that I could glue them onto the back of the servo. This is the panning portion of the pan tilt head. Now I take several pieces of foam tape and I attach them directly to the micro SD card slot. And I had to stack them a couple of them high so that they could stick to the sides of the servo and hold all of these electronic parts in place as the camera head is panning and tilting. I also applied a piece of tape to the back of this IC to hold the lithium ion battery in place. Side note, these batteries are approximately 3 volts and you can use two AA batteries to power them if you want to power your cameras from a distance. Now at this point I'm testing the cameras and you have to power each one on individually and set them both to record. You'll need to mark the video with a sharp spike in audio to make sure that both videos are in sync. When you're ingesting your files, keep them organized between left and right cameras, and you may need to convert them into a file format your editing software understands. Rotate the left camera 180 degrees, and pan the audio of each camera to the left and right to get full stereo. Here's the test that I just recorded. There's the moment I marked the audio so that I could sync each camera's clip together.
This is the circuit that I'll use to control the servos. And here's where the oscilloscope is attached. The oscilloscope is showing you how one millisecond the servo is in one direction and to a two milliseconds the servo horn rotates. This is the joystick I'll use and these are the potentiometers which will control the motion of the servos. Here's a test. Bend and trim the leads of these components just like this picture. Then come in and solder tin every lead so that they're very easy to solder together later on. As you see, when you pre-tin the leads and bend them in just the right shape, the architecture of the circuit comes together quite nicely. You'll need to double check the reference circuit diagram before you get the hang of building these circuits without a circuit board. This style of soldering is called point-to-point -point soldering. It's also called dead bug soldering. This third transistor connected to this 1K resistor is what creates the signal output for the signal wire of the servos. I super glued these servo controller circuits directly to the back of the servos and trimmed the leads short so that I could connect the servo cables to this circuit, then connect the joystick potentiometers to the circuit with CAT6 cables. I sanded the servo horn and sanded the edge of the enclosure of one of the servos so that both servos could stay connected and act as one unit. Here I'm showing you where each servo wire connects in the circuit. Red is the positive voltage, orange is your signal wire, and brown is your zero volts. These servos run on five volts. Here's the CAT6 cable. I cut off the end and stripped the wires back, then connected each wire to the corresponding points on the circuit so that I could send them back to my control box, which I'm about to build. Drill out holes to connect every part of your breakout box, like switches and ports. This plastic piece will be where the joystick is mounted, and I drilled this large hole to fit the joystick through. Mark the points where bolts will hold sockets components in place. I use foam tape to keep the batteries securely fastened to the lid of the enclosure. Here you can see the power switch. And this is the CAT6 port, or an ethernet port that I found, which will connect the robot head to my control box. 
The joystick, I super glued to this flat piece of plastic, which I needed to bolt to the enclosure. But I needed to bolt it to the enclosure with a set distance away from the top. So I used an empty pen cut into spacers so that I would bolt the plastic in place at that distance. Now the whole robot head I decided to keep attached to the end of a long rod. So I marked where the holes on the servo hone on, pilot drilled holes into the wood rod, and then screwed the servo horn directly to the wood rod so that the whole head could be attached quite easily. Make sure you tape the cable to the rod to hold all of these wires in place or else they'll tug on your circuit and potentially break. Here it is in action. I've got the microphone on the right so you can hear the servos grinding. The circuit's a little bit jumpy. This is a great way to get a new perspective and keep it out of the way. Here's the test video. As you can see, it's a little shaky and you can definitely hear the servos, but it's a neat effect and it offers you a new 3D perspective of a robot. I'd imagine you might want to include this in a robot or a remote control vehicle, maybe even an even crazier spy camera. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please tell me what you think and especially tell me if you borrow this idea or any parts of it for your own projects. Thank you for watching.